Hey everybody, this is Valencia and welcome to my channel, Balloons and Business, where I show you the business of balloon and event decor. So today I'm going to show you how I made this year a wall. This is due to popular demand and several requests. So I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial of how I made this wall. And I'm also going to show a little tutorial on how I made a teddy bear themed balloon garland that I put on this wall. So if you want to see how I made this, just stay tuned. So I'm starting off with this half inch thick sheet of plywood that I got at Home Depot. And the dimensions are four feet wide by eight feet tall. And I had an employee cut the height down to six and a half feet. I then purchased three two by two inch furring strips. And these strips are normally eight feet long. I had two of them cut to six feet and one of them cut in half. So I had two four feet pieces from that one strip. So I'm going to double tie a piece of ribbon to a pencil and I'm going to use this to draw the curvature of the board at the very top. So about two feet towards the top of the board, I'm going to measure out the halfway point of the board and draw an X. That X is where I'm going to place my ribbon and it's going to be the starting point for when I draw my curve. So I'm going to place the end of the ribbon on the X and I'm going to extend that ribbon out all the way until the pencil reaches the edge of the board. And keeping the ribbon extended, I'm just going to slowly draw the curve of the board. So now I'm going to be using this Ryobi brand jigsaw and I'm going to be using the wood blade with the smallest teeth. So this is going to be on setting number four and you see that flat part of the jigsaw. You want to lay that down firmly on the board and then begin to cut, keeping the jigsaw on the board. Don't raise or lift it up. And you just want to slowly follow the curved line that you drew. So I always give a disclaimer on these type of videos that I'm not an expert in woodwork. Most of the tips I've learned, I just picked up from YouTube videos, to be honest. Now I'm using this Ryobi brand sander to smooth out the curve on this board and round it out even more. Now I will admit that I went back over this board again. Um, I just took the jigsaw and just kind of cut just some of the little edges that didn't seem as round as I liked. And then I re-sanded it again. So every time you cut, you want to sand it, get all those splinters out and round it out. And another thing to note, it's also important to wear protective eyewear and a mask when cutting wood. Now it's time to attach my furring strips to the back of this wood wall. I'm gonna be taking some wood glue and I'm gonna generously apply it on one side of the furring strip from the bottom to the top. And again, as mentioned before, these fern strips were cut to six feet in length. Then I'm going to take the fern strip and I'm going to place it about six inches from the edge of the board. And I'm going to start all the way at the bottom edge. Then I'm going to take some heavy weights. So I'm going to be using cinder blocks to apply pressure to the fern strips so that they will stick to the board. And I'm going to leave it there for 12 hours. I'm going to take this 14 inch metal bracket that I got from Home Depot and using a one inch number 10 wood screw, I'm going to screw that bracket onto the furring strip. So these brackets have three holes on them and I'm going to pre-drill a hole because it's going to make it easier for the screw to go into the wood when you pre-drill the hole. So remember that last furring strip that I had cut in half to two four feet pieces. I'm going to take one of those four feet pieces and I'm going to drill it at the bottom of those brackets. The goal is to connect the brackets and create a place where I can set my weights on top to keep the wall from falling forward or backwards. 
So I'm just showing you up close how I pre-drilled a hole and then I took one of those number 10 wood screws and just screwed it in there. So here's how the back of the wall looks so far with the cinder blocks on top of that fern strip. So now what I'm going to do is take a two by one inch strip and I bought two of these. They were eight feet tall. I had them cut to five feet and I'm going to attach them at a 90 degree angle to create more support for the back of my wall. So again, I'm pre-drilling a hole before I put my screws in. So here's what the back of the wall looks like with all of the support and cinder blocks. So I wanted to provide just a little bit more security for my wall. So I decided to actually screw my furring strips to the board itself. When I made my first Sierra wall, I just relied on the wood glue. But this time around, I'm going to go ahead on and screw that strip onto the board. And I'm screwing it on at two points on each side. So of course, if you screw the strips on there, you're going to be able to see the screw. So you have a few options here. You can just paint over the screw or you can use some wood putty and cover up the screw. And once it dries, you can paint over it. Or if you don't want to use paint for your Sierra walls, you can use vinyl or cloth instead and you don't have to do anything to the screws. So I use the wood putty method. I took some sawdust from the wood that I cut, then I took some wood glue, mixed them together, then covered up the screws. Once it dried, I painted my share wall white. So now it's time to make this teddy bear themed balloon garland to put on the wall. So I'm going to take two balloons and I'm going to blow them up at the same time. Then I'm going to round them out by pressing them against the table, releasing air from the top. And then I'm going to tie the two balloons together into a dupe, leaving slack at the neck. So I use Sempertex Latte in five inch and 11 inch. I use Tuftex Lace in five inch, 11 inch and 17 inch. And I use Sempertex Baby Blue in five inch, 11 inch and 18 inch. So now I'm gonna take my dupes and I'm gonna double twist them together into small clusters. Each of the clusters I twisted together had four to five dupes, which is eight to 10 balloons. And again, you wanna make sure that you double twist your dupes into the clusters so that they will not pop out. You wanna make sure that they're nice and secure inside of those clusters. So once I twisted all my dupes in the clusters, I'm going to take one neck from one balloon in one cluster and one neck from another balloon in another cluster and I'm going to tie them together. And this is how I'm going to connect the clusters of my balloon garland. Now one thing to note is that those Tuftex lace balloons, they're made out of a very tight latex. And so the necks of those balloons aren't as stretchy as the other two colors. So just make note of that when you're tying them together. So to attach my balloon garland to my Sierra wall, I'm going to take a backdrop clamp and I'm going to double tie a 160 balloon onto that clamp, leaving the two ends out. Then I'm going to attach the clamp to the board. And then I'm going to take one half of that 160 balloon, wrap it around one side of the balloon garland Take the other half of the 160, wrap it around the other side of the balloon garland, and then double tie that 160 balloon into itself. And I use two backdrop clips on this wall, one at the midpoint and one at the bottom. Now I'm adding a cluster of latte balloons to the very top by tying one neck from one balloon in that cluster to a neck of another balloon inside the balloon garland. So I want the top part of that balloon garland to look like it's going behind the wall. So I'm taking a piece of duct tape and I'm putting a 160 balloon on there, leaving the two ends out. Then I'm going to attach the duct tape onto the back of the wall, then wrap each side of the 160 around the balloon garland and tie it into itself like I did with the backdrop clamps. 
And that's how I attached it without you seeing it on the wall. So this is what it looks like behind the scenes. So now I'm going to be adding some clusters to thicken up the balloon garland, especially at the bottom. I'm tying a 160 balloon around my clusters and then I'm wrapping it around the balloon garland. And I'm especially doing this for those lace balloons because as I mentioned before, the latex is so tight so it's, it's a little too difficult to tie the necks together. So I want the bottom part of that balloon garland to look like it's going down and out a little bit at the base and then I'm thickening up the balloon garland by adding in a 36 inch balloon and some more clusters now as I was playing with the shape of this garland I decided to remove that large light blue balloon at the top because I wanted the balloon garland to look like it was decreasing in size as it was going upward and behind the shiero wall so I'm going to be attaching small clusters of five inch decorators to the balloon garland I'm going to take that 160 balloon and tie a cluster on each end and then I'm going to wrap that 160 balloon around one of the balloons in the balloon garland. So you want to make sure that you double wrap that 160 around the balloons to make sure that those clusters stay in there nice and secure. And I'm just adding clusters to fill in gaps and add more texture and complexity to the balloon garland. So here's the finished product to the Shiera Wall and Teddy Bear Balloon Garland tutorial. So I ended up adding that large light blue balloon to the bottom as well as another cluster of the lace balloons to spread out the bottom part and give it the shape that I want. I also attached that small little teddy bear at the top by tying a 160 balloon around its arm and then tying the other end of that 160 around one of the balloons in the garland. So if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, go ahead on and like it and please subscribe and you'll get notifications on future videos on balloon and event decor. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.